Good evening, everybody. This is, um, I'm gonna try and do something. I don't know how well it's gonna go, but I'm gonna start off, right? So I'm, um, I'm reading through the Bible in one year, and uh, I'm just following the uh, app that um, some of you may be familiar with. It's the, um, the Bible app, um, uh, and you get that on the Play Store. But, you know, I've, uh, um, you know, is inspired again because, you know, my, my buddy Dennis, who is down there in Houston and helping out and uh, rescuing many people that have been affected by Hurricane Irma and, I'm sorry, Harvey. I'm getting those two mixed up because one's about to hit Florida. Today is September 10th. Uh, so there's a lot for us to pause and reflect on and be thankful for. I'm going to see if I can get that right. And so as I see him, or as I, um, I don't see him, but as I know of what he is doing down there and how he's been impacted, his family. Um, and then I see that he's, you know, constant, he's reading his Bible each day. Um... And, you know, I've, I'm, I haven't been intentional about reading, you know, God's Word. And so I want to do this. And I think the other part is I've had this thought for a long time, um, going back many years, that I want to have a record to my kids and my grandkids of something that I can give to them. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes in many other areas of my life, but, and that stuff's in the past. So I want to leave something to them that would be beneficial. And this is one way I think I can do that. I have enjoyed many times reading to my kids, you guys, Sierra, Juby, Sammy, Elijah, Micah, stories uh, to them, to you guys. And uh, maybe this is something that might be helpful to you somewhere down the road or when you have a family that it might be something that um, that is useful and beneficial. Um, and you might get some joy out of it or, or whatever. Who, who knows? But uh, I am going to do this and I'm going to leave it to you guys and I'll talk a little bit. So hopefully it won't be um, too much. And, you know, I'm sorry if it at times it gets boring because, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so, but no sorries. So here I go. I'm uh, uh, let's see. Let me bring up my Bible app. Second day for me. So I've already read through Genesis one, and um, and uh, three and through four, and so I'm reading Matthew. Now, two through thirteen through twenty three. So, God, I uh, just give you this time and ask that you would bless it. Amen. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. So that's a reference back to Moses, you know, when the Israelites were um, in captive, um, you know, I don't know how many years before Jesus but many years before Jesus was born. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. That was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Again, this is the second time this happens to uh, 
the Israelites. But again, this is now, this is coming from their own. Whereas before Pharaoh, if we remember that Pharaoh, um, actually, I'm sorry, God um, had visited upon the Egyptians when Pharaoh did not release the Israelites out of captivity. He said, you know, I will strike down the firstborn of each house um, in Egypt. And again, so we have, that's where we get the Passover. So there's a lot more in there, but uh, I'll keep that brief. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea and Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. We're always afraid, right? When God tells us to go do things, it's, we're just we're scared of the unknown. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. And as we go more into our readings later on, when Jesus is, um, begins his ministry. We'll hear that term. He'll be called a Nazarite, right? So that's Matthew 2, 13 through 23. And now I'm going to move to Matthew 3, 1 through 6. And this is out of the NIV. Usually I read New King James because uh, I just, I don't know, maybe because I grew up with King James, but I like New King James Version. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, turn around, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who has spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. <clears throat> Real wild man, this guy. Um, people went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. And then Psalms 2, 1 through 12. But before I do that, I'm going to read Psalms 1 because that is one of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible. And then I'll go to two. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, or not like that, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness, for the Lord knows... For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Psalms chapter 2. Why do the nations rage, and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together. Against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. (sighs) 
I lost my place there for a second. And the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. All right. Next is Proverbs 1, 7 through 9. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. So that takes me through, again, I haven't read Genesis 3 and 4 to you. Um, that talks about uh, Genesis 3 where the, you know, Eve and Adam they join together and they um, eat of the fruit that God tells them not to. Um, they were tempted by the serpent who is Satan. Um, and then from that they realize that now they have they are shamed. They have this shame. They, they, they've gone against God. Um, and you know I, I can I can talk to the, talk to you about that for days and days, but um, on the other side of that, there is this grace and this protection that God does, you know, from that action. And um, so Adam and Eve are removed from the garden. Satan is uh, cursed, um, and secondly, Eve is is giving a, given a curse but then a blessing comes through her uh, you know because of you know that Jesus will come you know from that line so um, and then Genesis 4 is the um, talks about Cain and Abel right where Cain was a um, a farmer and Abel was a shepherd and um, there was an instance there where, you know, it's, it's the first family strife, right? That's recorded anyway. And uh, Cain ends up taking Abel's life. He murders him um, out of jealousy. Uh, the, the situation was that both of them uh, were to bring a sacrifice to, to God. And so Abel brought the best of his sheep to, to, to sacrifice. And Cain just brought a offering, it says. And, and we know it's not the, the best offering. It's not the best of his fruit. It's not the best of his labor because uh, in the story it says that uh, Abel brought the first of his, his flock, the best that he had. And then so from that, God blesses Abel, but Cain does not receive a blessing at that time. Um, and then so Cain, you know, in that, right, in that, um, seeing that, he gets angry and he gets upset and he gets jealous, right? And he, he plots against his brother, thinking that if he takes his brother out, then maybe that God would see uh, who knows right we don't know what goes on we can think about it and we can probably comment on it and have some commentary and midrash back and forth but he doesn't he just he, he gets upset and he murders his brother and then it, the, so again kind of reflecting back on um, you know God says hey where is your brother and then and then we have that famous um, quote that that you hear throughout the, the ages is that uh, Cain goes back to God and he, he's so God he's he's communing with God I don't know obviously I don't think it's face to face but he's talking to him um, and he goes am I my brother's keeper and so there's that like he wants to hide something just as Adam and Eve when they went against God 
they hid, right? They hid the, the same way in, in a similar fashion. So God goes, obviously, well, uh, him being God, he goes, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So God, again, being the creator, is in touch with everything and knows, right? God knows everything about us. And so at that point, he receives a, a curse. And his curse is that, you know, everything that he basically touches, um, you know, of, of his craft and of his profession, it, there, there will be no good of it, right? And then so... Cain cries back to God. He's like, what you have done, this curse, this, this sentence that you have put on me is too much for me to bear. And it, as soon as people see me, they will know and they'll want to kill me. So he's pleading to God. He's like, please don't do this, right? Um, and then so God goes, nobody will, be able, nobody will kill you because I'm going to put a mark on you. So that's kind of interesting too. I, I'd, I'd love to unpack that a little bit more. And see what that meant, right? It means the mark of Cain, right? Because it's... Yeah. So um, so that's kind of where we're at with Genesis 4, right? Um, but anyways, again, I, I'm thinking as, I, as I'm reading this, one, um, thank you, God, for the, the opportunity. And then just two, I hope... My, my prayer is that this is a becomes a blessing. And, uh, you know, we have this incredible ability to record now and um, and keep for record purposes so with that my children if you see this or my grandchildren I love you from this side to your side as you are on the other side seeing this um, God bless you guys again so September 10th and right now what's going on in our world is that We've had these two hurricanes come through. One hit Texas. Houston has been flooded. M many, many people are displaced. Flooding that it was unimaginable, right? That, that you just couldn't believe happened. And now there's this hurricane Irma that's going up through Florida and hitting the west side of it. Um, and, and again, my thoughts go to my mom uh, for her safety. So... I, uh, my plan is to be able to go down here, there and see her at the end of the week and um, you know and I'll, I'll uh, again till tomorrow um, all my love and blessings to you all and signing off I'll see you tomorrow bye